Shut up and sit down. Hey everybody, Barry here again. Hey everybody, Barry here again. I'm actually going to fix the pan hard rod in this video. I'm not going to blabble on too much until I actually get it fixed. I already have it on the legs of the ramp already because that's what efficient people do. Not like me who just stands up here and talks to you guys for five, six minutes at a time. That must be awful. I apologize. I'll try my best. The reason I need to do my pan hard bar is because look at the gap on the wheel back here. It's basically flush with the fender. And look at this one. Dude, we can't even see the wheel. Oh, look, there it is, about two inches inside the fender. Basically, what happened here was at the burnout competition in Stephenville, or one of the massive trench, small car-sized potholes on the way to or from Stephenville, my parent hard rod broke. We can see down here that, yup, it's not really lined up that well. So just for ease of use, I'm gonna jack it up on a ramp because I learned from the last video to never just say, ah, it'll only take five minutes, I'll just put it on jack and jack stand. That's, that's a major, that's a big no-no for me. <laughs> After lying on my back trying to pick that shifter cable, that was horrible. So yeah, I'm gonna get up there, unbolt it, and then we'll put it back together, weld it, and put a brace on it because I don't like when things break. Obviously it is a safety concern. It affects the suspension directly. It affects alignment with the van body and the rear end like this, but it does have ladder bars, which are solid mounted to the rear end and go up and mount to bushings or actually heim joints in this case. So the actual amount of sway that it'll have is probably about a half an inch, which is not insane. So it's, it's not like four links where it can swing three, four inches five, six inches and put you directly off the road. But obviously it needs to be there. So we're gonna go fix it. I'm gonna try to push the tire so that you can see right here, if it's not on too weird of an angle for you, that how much it needs to go to close the gas. So if I push the wheel over, which ain't easy, you can kind of see that it closes off the gap and then everything lines up again. So I just need to put this over on the bench and close the gap up, make sure everything is aligned correctly and weld it back together. I'm gonna to put a brace across right here so that this doesn't expand. The issue is basically that bar always wants to be straight when there's any strain, uh, we'll say going around a left turn, this bar wants to straighten out because it's like a zigzag. And when we're going around a right turn like this, the bar wants to fold over on itself and make this angle more exaggerated. So it's always wanting to do this. So if I put a brace across right here, say with a piece of quarter plate or 3 16 plate in a triangle, that'll fix that issue. Obviously right here, I can't do that. So I'll put two braces across right here on the bottom and maybe the top up here. That way it'll really fix that angle. Let me know how you like the new style of filming too, because like I've said many times before, oh boy, I have no idea what I'm doing. But I like talking to you guys, and I find it a lot easier, or maybe a lot more appealing, if I can talk while I'm working, rather than walking around like a chicken with his head cut off, just talking for 25 minutes and getting five minutes worth of work done. I hear Cass. She's probably gonna rev it up. Huh? Ah, she hit the horn. That never happens. Oh, that's super loud. Probably pull it off the ramp.
So after I get this pan hard rod fixed, I can go out and do some actual tuning because I won't be afraid to hit highway speeds and not worry about it fishtailing all over the road and putting me out in the weeds. There's only so much you can tune when you're doing 40 in a dirt parking lot right behind your work on dinner break. We got our parts. Let's go fix them. The plan is to have this thing back in shape, which is like this. It's also how everything actually fits pretty much right back together like that. So I don't have to measure anything again. All I gotta do is put it back in the same shape, weld it back together, and give it to her. Brace, braces. Don't have forgot about it, hopefully. I guess it'll kind of go like that. Yeah. Seamless, kind of. It's not very heavy pipe is the, most of the issue I'm running into. It's only about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe a bit more. But there's always more welding. Oh, well, we're all set up. Welder's running. Now I forget how to put this together. Well, that's just part of my day anyway. <laughs> See if I can nip this in the voice any sense. See if I can nip my fingers in the voice. Be nice, be nice, be nice, be nice, be nice. I've had the van out for a couple of test drives as you have or may have seen in the last video. And uh, the thing is working really, really well. It's wicked snotty. I love the way it runs and it pulls hard. Seems like it pulls really hard. I got a lot of tuning to do on it, but At the very least, it does run well enough to drive around the parking lot, around next door parking lot, up main road a little bit. So I'm wicked excited. Watch your eyes. Turn this fan on. Piece again. Yeah. Ain't perfect, but it'll work. is ugly. Don't blame the welder, blame the welder. This is what the customer means when he says he's got a buddy who can do it cheaper. <laughs> Mint. 
Those welds and braces in, I guess. Plan now is to take some of this scrap metal stuff that I have here and I'm going to put a piece in on this side. Probably just take it a corner, say make it that big anyway, the size of that gap. Then I can weld it right along on both sides. That'll secure this piece. And then I've got some eighth inch plate right here that I don't want to go in the middle here because it might hit my diff cover, but I could make another piece that kind of goes like across the top there, but have it bead. That way I can weld it around here on both sides. Okay, before I show you guys this thing, in my defense, I'm not an awful welder, I'm just not a very good welder. And also, I don't think I've ever met anybody as inconsistent as I am with welding. You think you just go like, on, weld, looks great. Nope, it either looks like garbage or stacked dimes. I've never stacked dimes. Anyway, here we go. So here's here's the decent, like I'm, I'm okay with that for flux core. I'm okay with that. Obviously I started here, met in the middle. This one, I went the whole way around. There's still a lot of that old garbage flux under that I just couldn't brush off, but whatever. And then you get over here and the stupid tip kept skipping and it looks terrible. But it's pretty industrial looking, I must say. I don't think it's going to break anymore. If it does, I hope the whole rear end falls out and I can just throw the whole thing in the crusher. Got to have a plan B. Uh, let's, uh, let's bolt it in. I might even spray a little bit of paint back there so it's actually black. Maybe. If there's any up in the scrap cabinet. Let's go. Well, it's almost cold enough to handle now, but it's almost too hot for me to hang on, so I'm going to, I got to keep moving it. Uh, and test fit, test fit, test fit, test fit. Oh, it's dark under here. So that end um, goes up there. And that end goes there. And look how much we're out. This thing's off like an inch. Ish. Oh, wait, no. Man, I'm not very good at this. Okay. Uh, we're out a, uh, oh, probably an inch, yeah. Ricky, let's bolt it on and spray some paint back there. I'm gonna have to draw the rear end across this way, of course. I just have no idea how. I have a ratchet strap, so there's something. I guess I'll put it here. But the way it. Uh, let's try it. There. So I have kind of a question that's been, that I've been thinking about for a little while, and that's, um, who is your guys, like, car guy hero, or car girl hero, whatever? Um, kind of a hard question, but obviously we're all car guys here, like, you're not here for me, let's face it. <laughs> But we all had that one hero person who got us into cars, like a lot of people, like it was your old man or had a family member who was into hot rods or like a TV show that got you into it. And everybody has a different one. Mine. I guess I'll start seeing as I'm the only one here right now. Pretty much my Uncle John, who, he would be the first one. He's the one who pretty much got me into this first, I would say, because he would be in, in trade school doing automotive. 
and read me his book, like his textbook, and get me to uh, pick out like tie rods or cylinder heads or distributors, carburetors, all that stuff, and make sure to teach me that stuff and make sure I knew what it was and I could point it out to him in the book. And he's the one who put me on to car shows like him and him and my old man put me on to car shows like Stacy David, who is one of my absolute 100% car heroes. And the ridiculous projects he used to do, like Copperhead, the Sergeant Rock, and all of those, like that's all wicked stuff. All amazing, like high dollar builds. But still, he'd have stuff in there that regular, regular car guys could afford. Which was really cool. Like obviously he had a beautiful shop. The place was amazing and immaculate. Oh, boy, Rich. But it was still, uh, he still seemed like a cool guy. Like he wasn't one of the show guys, like Boyd Coddington would go out and just curse everybody out. And, and he was just, he didn't seem like a cool guy at all. I mean, he was a car guy, but, oh man. Yeah, he just wasn't there for the show, I guess. So what do you, what do you guys think? I like to, I kind of like to get, I like to get, you know, you guys too. <laughs> Like Jesse Combs was around forever. She was on the go in the car scene back when I was young too. And obviously we know what happened to her, that's tragic. But when you hold a land speed record, at some point you're probably gonna crash. So that's something that we all gotta accept. If you're doing hood rat stuff in the middle of the night. You're gonna have to accept the consequences just like we all do, I guess. Uh, that got real. Cool, let's put some paint up. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Ow. Oh, it looks good. Ah. I put that hitch there. I realized that I can see the rear end from space. So why not clean it up a little bit? I should turn on a fan. And at least spray a little bit of paint on it. I mean, everything looks really cool. Ladder bars look cool. It's neat to see. Not everybody I can identify it, but any car guy pretty much in the domestic world can identify 8.8. .8. You're not gonna expect to see it under the soccer mount band, but you can pretty much expect anything around here. I gotta say. I started this project kind of for a laugh because I was like, nobody in their right mind on the face of the earth would do this. Uh, I'm not saying nobody is resourceful because obviously there are people, I'm not even doing it with any resources. <laughs> obviously there's people who could do it differently or better. Uh, I think you got to have the mindset for it. I guess if anybody knows me personally, you probably got that figured out by now. That's so pretty. I hope I didn't forget to press record. Man, I think that is perfect. Besides this, you stay up there. Man, I love it. So cool. I'm a lot happier with this now that it's all braced up. I can get a finger in between here. 
Nice. I want to get it on the ground now and just see if the rear end is still aligned fine. If it's not, too bad for me, I guess. It's staying right where it is. This thing has a stance, man. I wish it was, I'm going to say an inch, probably two inches lower in the back. But as of right now, without basically tubbing it, there's nothing I can do. I'll give you a quick rundown in case you haven't seen this before. Look how much coil spring there is. That's not a lot of coil spring. That's completely suspended. All the weight right now is on that shock bolt. There's no weight at all on the springs. Look. When that compresses, I've got about an inch and a half of travel to right here. That basically means that I don't have any more spring to cut off. If I cut off any more spring, like say a quarter of a coil or a half a coil, I will drop probably an inch, but I'll be right on the spring supports or on the jumps bumpers, whatever you want to call it. And that would be quite uncomfortable. I have bottomed this out, out back here, hitting puddles and stuff. Man, it's uncomfortable. It just goes bang. Plus you can see, this has been clearancing itself quite nicely right here. Yep. Perfect. It's just making more room. It's still rusty all back here, but I'm just gonna leave that for now because I don't have enough paint. But where it matters, man, it looks good. So I think now we can put it down and go for a test drive. Oh, I've been waiting for this moment for so long. Way too long. Let's go. So I took it out for a test drive. I set up a tripod at the end of the street in Chihuahua, Mexico, at the very end of Mexico, where there's like an abandoned McDonald's you can see in the background ghost cars driving around so i set it up and did one real good hard pull you can hear the transmission you would have already seen it 10 seconds ago you can hear the transmission shift up shift down shift up and i was like I'm, I'm tired of this so i just floored it and uh i passed by the camera at 50 kilometers an hour speed limit and it made 10 psi and blew off a charge tube. So that's what I'm gonna attack right now because I'm tired of blowing off charge tubes all summer, all last summer I was at the same thing. So I think main reason is because these clamps are almost too big. Man, this will not focus, will it? Almost too big, seems like they're bottomed out. You can see over here probably a little bit. There we go, it's maxed right out. And also I don't have the hoses um, beveled or whatever you call it. Anyway, like bumped up at the end so the hose can't slip off. The pipes. So I'm gonna do that right now. So I'll just set it up on time-lapse. Girls are here watching the YouTube videos. So I'll set it up on time-lapse and I'm gonna take all the tubes off and crimp them. I just use vice grips and like peel them open like a pop can. Just enough so that the hose can't slip off over, but not too much so that it cuts the hose. And then maybe next I'll make 15 pounds. Woo! This might be kind of awkward looking because I'm trying out this camera mount that Dwayne Mifflin gave me. But uh, just trying a couple different views, see what see what we can get out of this. So I just gotta write this tune that I just put in a couple minutes ago. The van seems to be running really, really well. Uh, it doesn't have any misfires. Doesn't seem like there's any exhaust leaks, but I have to check because the only thing that's on this is ultra copper. There's no gaskets on the manifold. 
or on the both manifolds, just ultra copper, like globbed on there as hard as I could, as much as I could. And um, the T6 flange on the turbo, I don't have a gasket for it. So I doubled up on ultra copper there. Is it gonna work? I have no idea. Uh, do I have a lot of faith in it? Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. It made 10 pounds the other day, so uh, did it backfire? Did it blow out the gasket? I have no idea. I do have some gasket paper, some Felpro stuff, so I'm, uh, I'm gonna try that out. I got a gasket cut out of it, and hopefully it works, but a little tune is wrote in. I'm just going to drive it in the back of the garage, but... Hey, the mass air failed perfectly. I love how this thing starts up so well when it's... Uh, after it fails the mass air. different angles on this because when I turn it further so you can see at the front the pillar is in the way so we'll have to deal with this one for now assuming you can hear me because this thing's like super loud I'm still gotta use my stupid screwdriver to get it out of park because I haven't gotten under the dash yet to figure out where the solenoid is but it'll do for now I hope that phone doesn't fall off the window it fell off the window. Oh, there's me. Well, let's try it again. This boat's not working very well. <laughs> well, we're going at it old school. Hello. Hello. Oh, all my sloppy trans brake wiring diagrams are falling out. Don't blow away, I need that. I gotta figure this thing out yet. Seems well so far. It's a little bit lean, but I'm fine with that. It's not 10 to 1 now, so that's alright. It's awfully bright. Man, I love how this thing runs. Oh, we're lean. We're lean. Lots of traffic coming. I guess we'll get to idle data anyway. Tick, 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 tick. Oh, I think we got a breakaway. Oh boy. <laughs> oh man, this thing makes me smile every time I get in it. I don't even care that it's a van anymore. Like, I love vans. I just, I just love trucks more. But, this thing makes me happy. Holy. That was... I might have just done Drifty Boys on Main Street. Is that frowned upon? Who knows? I should make a sticker that says Drifty Boys are not a crime. <laughs> okay, come on backwards. The mini spool makes this regular U-turn into like a 14 point turn. <laughs> so, oh, it just got super loud inside. Ooh, don't hit the ramp, don't hit the ramp, don't hit the ramp. And turn it off. And turn it off. Oh, we got some rich up there. That's, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. How much injector are we at, I wonder? I got some issues with my injectors, apparently. Like, I'm at 80% injector at five pounds that's not that's not really good not good at all but i made five pounds at 59 percent throttle 59 percent throttle i made five pounds of boost why do people not use tractor trailer turbos all the time people are like you're gonna have so much lag it's gonna be horrible you'll never spin it up enough to make boost yeah it's right there it's right there. Let's see when it started making boost, actually. Quiet dinger. 
Let's see when it started making boost. So, okay, minus three, minus two, minus one. Look at the throttle position. Still 44%, 45%, 46%. Okay, let's see when we got one PSI. Okay, one PSI at 77%. And that's when I started letting off the throttle, say at 80%. Letting off the throttle, making more boost. Throttle position is down to 60%, up to 3.4 pounds. Wow. Five pounds at 59%. Holy, I like this. Obviously there's turbos that are purpose built for gas engines for certain RPM ranges for cams, whatever. But like Richard Holdner said, every cam is a boost cam. And I don't know if anybody said this, but every turbo works. It might not work as well as others. It might not spool as fast as some others or be as efficient, but this is a Cat 3406 turbo with a titanium whirly boy in it and it does awesome i'm really happy with it what rpm did it start making boost at so we're at one pound one pound at 2700 rpm that's awesome still not at full throttle 77 percent throttle 2800 rpm one pound i am super excited for how ridiculous this van is going to be when I can actually give it 100% throttle. I don't even know what to say. Oh man, this is going to be fun. And dangerous. I just did Drifty Boys on Main Street with a little over half throttle. And made boost. Do you guys get butterflies? I get butterflies. <laughs> and now we'll go over to my speed density wideband error chart tuner i is the best tuner because reasons uh, uh, i'm not good at this at all actually but yeah so it seems like it pulled a little tiny bit of fuel out around here but in some cells it's putting in like a lot more fuel like right here 113 percent right here is 105 here is 87 106 so you can see that this is just one big jagged mess right now. And the reason for that is because I have my cell count set to zero so I can grab as much data as I can right now in the short runs. So when I get on the highway, at least it might be close enough and I can turn it up to say 15 hits or 10 hits. And then it'll pull a lot more reliable data that's gonna be closer to the actual number. Right here in 1200 RPM, 70% is saying it's 6%. Uh, I think that's lean. Yeah, right is lean. It's 6% lean. Now, that might have been only at that one time. I might have just blipped the throttle, let some air in, and it says it's lean. But in reality, if I had to pass over that one cell a handful of times, it might only be 3% lean, or it mightn't be at all. So this is just a really quick way to pull some data quickly. And when I get out on the highway, I'll go up in the RPM range, down in the RPM, up in the RPM, down, and fill in as much of that table as I can with a high cell count. And I'll get like spot on data out of that. And then I can really smooth out the VE table and it should be good from there. I really love playing with this side of the tuning. It's so much fun. Alrighty, well, we're back and, well, it looks fine. Not. I got a lot of work to do with this yet. Now, before I could drive it on the road any length, this is, this is a bit, this is a bit, um, a lot. And I want to put some exhaust on this thing and I've been putting it off long enough. That's going to be a full video in itself. And I think I can do a few more like tidy up things, maybe a little bit more wiring. I really, really want to figure out that sloppy trains break because I don't need it, obviously. I'm not going racing in this thing. But um, I really want to figure it out because it's there and for whatever reason, it will not work. So that's what's going to be in the next video. And I cannot wait to try it. I cannot wait. Um, it, it's going to be something serious when I get that figured out. So I'm going to finish it up here. 
And thanks again for watching, everybody. Thanks for subscribing, liking the videos. Thanks to my patrons. If you want to check out my Patreon, it is patreon.com slash stationrollratrods. And we'll see you in the next one. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks for watching.